Hi, boys and girls. <clears throat> Today we're going to be listening to Lesson 5, Fins and Gills. And we're, uh, as you can tell from the title, going to be learning some more facts about fish with Rattenboro. Um, in order to complete this lesson, you are going to need a page that looks like this that uh, I believe I have photocopied for you. And we'll be adding some, as you listen to the story, you'll be adding some text to this bubble map on fish. So um, make sure you have a pencil out, make sure you have this piece of paper. And then obviously your Chromebook is going to be needed so that you can see the pictures and know when to stop and answer some questions or do some writing on this page. So let's get started. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you more about my friend Paulo Piranha and the group to which he belongs. So far, you've learned that scientists classify living things by common characteristics in order to study them and show relationships. You have learned about cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. Who remembers if Paulo is cold-blooded or warm-blooded and can explain what that means? Ah, bravo, right. Paulo Piranha's internal body temperature varies with his surroundings. When Paolo is swimming in warm water, his body temperature is higher than when he's swimming in cold water. Who remembers another way scientists classify animals? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the bones. Right. Some animals have backbones. What's another word for animals with backbones? Yes, animals with backbones are called vertebrates. And those without backbones are called invertebrates. Paolo is one of the many kinds of animals capable of swimming. Having a strong backbone is one type of body design that helps Paolo and other fish be good swimmers. You've also learned a little bit about taxonomy, the science of classification. Fish are members of Animalia or the animal kingdom, just like you and me, but they belong to a different animal group. Today, I'm going to teach you a little more about animals that are classified as fish. So, to say that in three words, fish are aquatic. They don't live on land. They live in water. All species of fish are aquatic. Okay, boys and girls, let's pause here um, and take out your page that looks like this. And let's identify one piece of information we just heard from Rattenboro. Let's see. Fish are, if you remember, cold-blooded. You can add that to one of the uh, points here. Let's see. Cold fish blooded. I'll move that up so you can see it a little better. And remember, as I go through and add comments to this web, you can pause the video and put it on your piece of paper. Let's see, what else did Paolo say? Well, Paolo or uh, Rattenboro said that fish are vertebrates. Maybe I'll click over here and add vertebrates, vertebrates to my graphic organizer. Vertebrates. Let's see, what else did he say? Oh, he said that fish are aquatic. So I could add that over here aquatic. It's not so important that you um, put the words exactly where I did on my graphic organizer, but it is important that you put those words on there so that we can keep them and record them and use them in our further research. Okay, let's get back to our story. Fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Let's take a look at my picture that shows a view of planet Earth from space. There is a lot more water than land. Nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Fish are swimming about in the Earth's waters from ponds and streams to rivers, lakes, and oceans. It's no wonder that fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Most of those wet, watery fish habitats are salty because most of the Earth's water is salt water. If you ever swim in the ocean, you may get a little taste of the salty water. 
Sharks, cod, and flounders are all saltwater fish. Freshwater fish live in lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. What do you think fresh water is? Bass and trout are common freshwater fish, and some humans actually find them very tasty. Come to think of it, I find fish quite delicious when I can get my paws on fish scraps. Some fish, such as salmon, spend part of their lives in freshwater rivers and part in salty water. Salmon begin their lives in rivers where they stay for anywhere from six months to three years, depending on the species. Then they make an often dangerous journey out to sea, facing predators and changing water temperatures along the way. They live in the saltwater ocean for about four years before returning to the freshwater rivers to lay their eggs. Their migration often covers several hundred miles. Okay, boys and girls, let's think if we can add any more information to our graphic organizer. Hmm. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can add something about the types of water they can live in. Okay, let's get back to the show. Let's stop for a moment to think about the different ways that taxonomists classify Paulo, a South American piranha from the Amazon River. Well, he's a cold-blooded aquatic vertebrate. He's a fish to be sure. The question is whether he's a saltwater fish or a freshwater fish. Hmm. Which of these types of water is his home? That's right, a freshwater river. Paolo's home is the Amazon River, one of the largest rivers in the world. Piranhas live in freshwater environments, mostly rivers, so they're classified as a freshwater fish. Sometimes animals are classified by their physical characteristics. Though piranhas do have very sharp teeth, they are not the bloodthirsty carnivores they are sometimes perceived to be, always ready to attack humans. Indeed, members of the red-bellied species of piranha do not hunt the meat of other fish in large groups, but that's not all they eat. Most piranhas are omnivores. You've reviewed carnivores and omnivores earlier in this domain. Can you remember what the difference is? That's right. As omnivores, most piranhas eat both animals and plants, eating seeds and fruit that fall into the water. Many piranhas also feed on carrion, animals that have already died. You will continue to hear about the different foods that many different animals eat, and this will help you to describe animals. Later, you'll hear about how the shape and size of animals' teeth give you clues about what they eat. So, you already know that several know several common characteristics of fish, but there's more. Can you think of any others? Here. I'll give you a hint. You know that all animals need to breathe oxygen in order to live. Fish do not have lungs. So we have to wonder how in the world, or in this case underwater, do they breathe? Look closely at this fish and see if you can spot its breathing machine. The respiratory or breathing organs of a fish are called gills. All fish have gills. They take water in through their mouths and the water passes over their gills. The gills take in oxygen from the water, allowing them to breathe. You'll die quickly if you don't get enough air because you draw oxygen out of the air, but fish will die quickly if they don't have water because their oxygen comes from water. The African lungfish is the only fish I know that has lungs in addition to gills and can survive out of water. We call this an exception to the rule or a pattern breaker. Before the dry season, when the water dries up and leaves a sun-baked riverbed behind, the lungfish buries itself deep in the mud and builds a cocoon-like sheath around itself, staying there for a year or even more until water returns to the river. Okay then. Fish breathe with gills and you bring with, breathe with lungs. 
That's one big difference between you and fish. What's another? Okay, boys and girls, let's pause. You just heard some important information that you can add to your um, fish web here. Okay, back to the show. Think about how you swim with your arms and legs. Take a close look at the fish. Do you see any arms or legs? Nope. So what helps a fish move through the water? Yes, a fish has fins, all kinds of fins. It has fins on the side of its body for steering, fins at the back for powerful speed, and fins at the top and bottom to help it keep balance. Fish couldn't begin to move without those wonderfully flat fins and their flexible tails. Have you ever worn flippers? Flippers are designed to be like fish tails to help people move quickly through the water. Well, everybody, you've spotted the gills and the fins of a fish, but what about the rest of a fish's body? What about the skin? Hey, look at me, there I am. Taking a closer look at fish skin through my magnifying glass. Fish skin is very different from your skin. Fish have scaly skin to help protect them and help them move more easily through the water. These hard overlapping scales are rounded and smooth and fish have more than one layer of skin, just like you. Many scientists believe that fish appeared in the oceans more than 400 million years ago. It's hard to imagine how many fish live in all the Earth's waters today. More than 30,000 species are known, but a vast amount of the world's oceans have yet to be explored. What scientists actually know for certain is like one drop of water in a vast bucket. Scientists discover more and more all the time. Maybe one day you'll be one of those scientists who will discover something new. Most fish, such as salmon, goldfish, tuna, and eels, spawn or reproduce in a very unique way. When fish spawn, the mother releases her eggs into the water and the male fertilizes them or makes them complete and able to grow into a baby fish. Once these soft eggs are fertilized, they are often buried along the river bottom. Here, they develop and eventually hatch into tiny fish called larvae, the early form of fish. Some sharks, on the other hand, are among the few examples of live bearing fish. Almost the opposite of external spawning, the mother's shark eggs develop internally, remaining inside her body until they're born as live young, rather than as eggs. Boys and girls, let's take a pause here and see if we can add something else to our fish web that we just learned from the video. Okay, back to the show. Taxonomists have another way of grouping fish. They've divided all fish into three classes or classifications. Most fish belong to the class of bony fish. These fish have skeletons that are made of hard bony material. Most of them have a swim bladder, kind of like an internal floaty, which helps them stay afloat. Perhaps you know of some fish that are considered bony fish. Bass, clownfish, minnows, and sunfish are just a few. Another small class has some well-known members. As you've heard earlier, fish like sharks and stingrays have skeletons that are made of cartilage. This class of fish has tooth-like scales and some of them breathe through spiracles, small gill openings on the tops of their heads. The last class of fish is not as familiar to most of us. These fish are jawless and include some interesting members like the hagfish seen here and the lamprey. Earth's underwater world, Paolo's world, is a fascinating place, much of which has not yet been explored. Perhaps some of you will become scientists and study aquatic creatures like Paolo. Today, we've only talked about fish, 
but not all sea animals are fish. There are many other vertebrates in the ocean, such as dolphins, sea snakes, and sea turtles. The sea is also home to tens of thousands of species of invertebrates, animals you have seen before, such as crabs, clams, sand dollars, and squid. Let's review the characteristics of fish. Hmm. How many fish characteristics can you name? You might want to use your fish web to help you. Okay, now I'm going to read some riddles of sea creatures. See if you can identify which ones are fish and which ones are not. I am a jellyfish. My body has no bones and I have neither gills nor lungs for breathing. Oxygen moves easily through my thin skin. Sometimes I lay eggs, but I may also give live birth. I am cold-blooded and I would surely die if left out of water. Am I a fish? No, I'm not a fish. Even though the word is in my name, I'm classified as an invertebrate. Next one. I am a cold-blooded eel. My slimy, snake-like body is covered in scales and hides my backbone from view. I have gills. <clears throat> uh, sorry. I have gills and fins, and I lay my eggs in water where I live. Am I a fish? Yes, I'm a fish. Oh, let's look down here. Number three, I am a seahorse. My long body is encased in bony rings. I breathe with gills and my fins help me glide through the water. I am the male and I carry eggs in my pouch until they're ready to hatch. Am I a fish? Yes, I'm a fish. I am a whale, one of the largest animals in the sea. I breathe with lungs and give birth to live babies. Even though I'm not covered in hair, I do have a few bristles of hair here and there on my head. Am I a fish? No, I'm not a fish, but I am a vertebrate. I'm a mammal. Hey, boys and girls, sorting aquatic creatures is not as easy as it looks, is it? Next time, things will be even more interesting as we learn about some aquatic animals that live on land as well. How do you think we can do that? You'll find out more the next time we meet. Okay, boys and girls, that ends our read aloud for today. Make sure you are able to fill in the last three points on your fish web. And um, I would like you to come sit down on the floor when you're done. And we're going to do a little word work with a word you heard today. Bye.